Your tiny hands pat my cheeks less frequently now. Your happy, bubbling laughter drifts in and out of my memory like a giddy, silly song. Now and then, your tiny tears flood my eyes, and I yearn to hold your little warm form next to my lonely, aching heart. Though we are apart, your big blue eyes fill my soul in these desolate, uncertain times with a vision of love which no decree can cancel out, no ink can blot out, no hand can tear out, no selfishness can stamp out. I shall miss much of your growth, share an only part of your hurts, fears, accomplishments, and failures. But together, oh, together, we shall always sail the magic seas of your secret dreams. The short, unmercifully short time we were to have had together is now made shorter still. But as each day passes, I see your silky, honey-spun tresses blowing gently in the breeze, shining golden in the sunlight. You dance like an angel through the billowing clouds of my life, and the anguish I feel over losing you is somehow lessened a bit as your cherubic little arms embrace me in this cold, frozen sphere of isolation. I can see you running, laughing in the wind. I see you encircled in wildflowers, skipping in the rain. I hear you cry out in the darkness, and I feel your pain. Someone closed the magic door which led into my world. They slammed it hard and split the frame which round my heart did curl like turning leaves in a bitter breeze laced with ice and snow. Deep into my hive-like head, bewildered bees have flown with swollen thighs and tattered wings. Faces all unknown, echoes and images flashing past. Yes, now I hear the sound of wheels against the cobblestone, rattling a rusty rhythmic round. The noise leaps back from the quarry walls time after time after time to riddle my wretched speeding mind like a condor savage squall. The voice of the puppet cries aloud. The marionette lies still. It crumpled and died where the trolls abide in the dust on a distant hill. A damp gray mold crept o'er its form where the ashen moonlight glowed while Screaming banshees rumpled the night and the razor wind blew cold. A bullet blasted the brittle bone which glistened glacier white, and the shredded flesh peeled back to expose the sorrow deep inside that hollow wooden painted face with the childish chiseled grin. No one saw the dummy drown from the tears which flowed within. And so, they buried that marionette with the funny little grin, the shattered head, the severed strings, the grotesque wooden limbs, all twisted and gnarled in a splintered heap were cast upon the ground. Then set afire by a chimney sweep, his soul was never found. A black satin shadow hoods the sun. The web of death is swiftly spun. Lightning, thunder, hail, dust. The throes have ceased. Now comes the hush, the final touch. And the spirit flies, softly rising for blind men's eyes departing unseen neath a veil of lies and plastic screams. 
Bloated nuns and penguin priests waddle about their carrion feast, grunting eulogies, platitudes, prayers, and pleas. Everyone looks, but no one sees. Rotting meat on a beard doth lay for simpering hacks who kneel and pray for the strength to live another day. They know not why he passed this way. Black-draped deacons, lean and tall, mutter comfort in a pious paw, stripping and slashing as the flesh decays, yet none will feel the knife today. Ignorant dunces, masochists all, masked in agony they miss the call. Side by side they too shall fall, dreamers none, dreamers all. The dreamers gone, yet the lost still call. They tread in bliss through hog-wallow dung. They weave and wail as the death chants sung. They barf up gold into bowls of tin. Ten for him, ten for sin, ten for me. Please let me in. The priests stand fast with forgiving grins, their bowels encased by jackal skins. Sadness, love, madness, hate. Invisible tears that came too late now fall to stain aged parchment rules, akin in tune with paper fools who proudly ride astride dead asses bled dry by ghouls. The procession passes. Dazed, stumbling in shock, Equilibrium lost, bile rises, stomach churning, choked back vomit, tongue burning. Dry, salt-paved trails of agony stain hot, trembling cheeks. Aching bones splinter, my body speaks. Racked in pain, crystalline spears shred raw gelatin flesh. Blurred, mocking, undulating figures lurk again in an evil murky fog. I scream out in terrified silence and fall into the abyss, arms flailing, hands frantically clutching in the gloom, grasping nothing. A musky, blood-soaked, bizarrely tentacled placenta clings, shrivels, and rots in the stench of a dark, musty corridor. Blood roars like fire, scalding my brain, heart slamming, hammering, exploding again. Quivering lips draw taut, locked and set like jagged, chiseled granite. My vacant, sightless eyes grope, probe the darkness, swallowing, digesting nothing. The pungent, repugnant scent of death permeates, nauseates my soul, and I watch my blistered, bloated body swell, burst, and decay. Fat, Gorging maggots ravenously slurp pus-ridden body fluids as they ooze from bowel spring to eye socket. Giant razor-beaked vultures stand reverently about my twisted, torn cadaver cloaked in black satanic capes. Their vicious, scrotum-skinned heads glisten crimson, scarlet in the sunset. Shackles severed, the bond remains. Nothing's changed. Nothing. White ginger and orange blossoms embrace the cool, lavender skies of twilight, quietly saturating my mind. Amidst the burgeoning chill of rain clouds and thunderheads, gale winds maniacally whip ravaging cherry flames from thicket to pine stand. The dragon's scorching, searing breath flicks, licks away at my blackened charcoal soul. Golden embers dance heaven-bent, suspended, benumbed, a glowing, motionless shower of loneliness cooled in the dark, lengthening shadows of forever. I gaze out o'er rolling seas of tomorrow, and my senses are filled with the reverberating echo of a gutted, empty love. As the hollow porcelain waves 
crash against a lead crystal shore. I close my eyes and weep once more. Whiskey came first. Whiskey, followed, preceded, surrounded by sorrow, sprinkled lightly with guilt, folded into a choking lump of despair and seared in the cast iron belly of the shaggy, scarecrow creature cloaked in cast off clothes who stared at his reflection in the mirror behind the bar through sightless button eyes. His bony fingers, gnarled and bent, bore the yellow umber stain of several pounds of hand-rolled butts which he constructed and smoked continually, between double belts of old Mr. Boston Rye. He interrupted this ritual only to intermittently blow his incessantly running nose on a red bandana handkerchief. He had a deep but gentle voice, yet he rarely spoke to anyone save the bartender. His breath was sour, his teeth were rotten, and he reeked of urine, cheap cologne, and flophouse meals only half digested. That's the way they found him, lying dead face down in the alley behind the old New Yorker hotel on Christmas morning. Well, there was something else, though. A picture and a poem. They were found beneath the body when it was picked up and loaded on the stretcher. An old crumpled photograph of a comely woman with dark hair and a warm smile, and a poem scrawled in nearly illegible pencil-printed letters on a dirty dog-eared bar napkin. It was affixed to the picture by a rusty paper clip. The poem read, Over all this time, beneath all these days, around all this sorrow, through all this confusion, beyond all this searching, the love stays. Maybe all the poems have died. Maybe something happened to the roots. I, I don't know. It's hard to follow this mind of mine and I feel so terribly blank. I don't want to move anymore. The walls fall down and I'm naked and crying. And I don't like that. All I love has gone from me. And there's no one. Well, the critics like my work, so they say. A great new voice, a man of warmth, a man of truth, a fine poet. Plaudits, praise, patronage, and pain. I'm a glass mannequin tumbling like a kite in a whirlwind. The hectic times of social interaction, the intellectual confrontations, all take up time and tongue. But. What of the silence? Silence, the aftermath of that social holocaust. Silent frost, cold and dead. Not even the candlelight seems real. Such a long, long journey. And so little time. So little time. Your call never came, and I was suddenly very much alone. I felt abandoned, ashamed, and I felt like a fool. You asked me once if I was a poet all the time. I replied that my art and my life are inseparable. So I must be a poet most of the time. The rest of the time, I worry. I worry about hurting people and loving people. 
and I worry about being so lonely and miserable. And I worry about being so happy about being what I am. Because all is transient. Nothing stays. Nothing. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of going blind. I'm afraid of being a cripple. I'm afraid to write. I'm afraid to love. And I'm afraid of losing you. Because you're part of me. You see, I know that you love me in a silent, secret, frightened way which exposes your scars. Scars still young enough to carry the memory of the original agony. Oh, so often our yesterdays overflow and flood our todays, drowning our hopes for tomorrow, and that depresses me along with battered, starving children, smog, and old, forgotten, wrinkled people. Rusting, ragged, rotting exiles, banished to dirty green park bench islands where they mumble about pigeon dung and fondle photos of lost grandchildren as they wait for death to touch them. And I dream. I dream about someday accepting my life with as much joy and enthusiasm as I shall greet my own inevitable death. I dream about church bells pealing heavy and low as the cockscrow greets the dawn, while children through the barley go their laughter sweet and warm. I dream about Easter Sundays that never were, the bright spring air and marshmallow clouds laced with hyacinth and lavender and love. I dream about pretty little white-gloved girls in blue taffeta dresses with white satin ribbons. Pretty little girls with sparkling, innocent eyes and red licorice smiles. And I dream about the sea, the sea, the folding, rolling, sensual belly of a tepid tropic sea undulating in the twilight, calling softly, Enter me. And I dream about you, and find myself wishing that I were made of sterner stuff than dandelions and fairy tales, long, long forgotten. With so much left unsaid, with so much good to come, with so much warmth to share, with so much left undone. It really is quite difficult to show you how I care when I turn to take your hand in mine and find that you're not there. Two people standing alone together, worlds apart, singing different songs with similar words in separate rooms, sharing dreams and joy and winter's wounds, are often known as lovers. Cold, caught hold, all cold, chilled by woodwinds, every note a symphony, every thought a memory, Every nerve end a prickling crescendo of icy tentacles stretching outward like needles through snow-streaked sand. Yesterday's ribbons bind today's sorrows with tomorrow's pain. Impossible to go back. To go back again. Back to the symphony. The harmony. Back to the melody. Back to destiny to that stagnant asylum called yesterday. Shattered rainbows lay in slivers upon my bed, glistening, glistening. Maybe I've just gone laughing, tears splashing, lashing my brain, freezing droplets searing skin curled in sheets so gossamer thin like drapes at a window blowing in. 
signaling yet another end. Spindly pines embarrassed by the wind sing I love you through the metered rhyme of day as twilight throws her eerie shadows like Transylvanian capes into the violet, violent night. Like darkness born in music, the notes caught like mittens in briar, our songs play on, though uninspired by the image of a lost world weeping a quiet calliope of waxen candles. Somehow, more than just a dead forever dances on the walls of that simple Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, gone away. Sunday, Sunday, blown away. Sunday, when I discovered you hiding inside Wednesday, like a shivering, frightened kitten given to the ways of liars and thieves, tearing pages like dry leaves in the wind, dancing midst the dust of that final Saturday shared in pain and parting, starting like raw tripe riddled with parasites to dry in the sun. Oh, without guns to guard our minds from the stench of our souls festering, our throats fill with sawdust, and with dreams enough for tomorrow's fools, we bundle our love letters like old magazines and scream. If we should end somehow tomorrow, your memory will be mine. And you shall dwell in a stained glass tower, safe inside my mind. The stars will quench the parching thirst of my wretched, withered soul as they fall from out the sable sky like dark, delicious violet snow, sifting, swirling softly down to melt upon my tongue, while tears from out my eyes will flow and down my face descend playing tag like April rain, forming jerky little zigzag trains coursing down a window pane, racing to the sill. If we should end somehow tomorrow, then I shall love you still. Brassy and blaring, you came blasting into my world, tossing your hair like a crazy laughing carny gypsy singing songs and banging busted tambourines, joyously beating out the red and blue and yellow notes with your supple, gentle hands. Brash and bewildered, but, oh, so beautifully, so silently, so subtly, the lonely shadows in your eyes stretch their velvet fingers deep into the chaos of my mind. And there, Amidst my childhood dreams and broken toys, you danced. Our words lay now in timeless piles, those angry, accusing, agonizing words, fear-filled, tear-filled words, flesh-stripped bones gone to stone, those Desperate, bitter, broken words which shred our throats like shattered glass as they came pouring past our lips like glowing, flowing lava. Those words. Those blistering, blackened, ashen words gone gray. Those hideous, horrible, vicious words which turned our love to opal dust in the heartache of another day. Did I ever say how much my life meant to me, how full and rich and real it was when I was with you? Or were we just a fragile, frightened moment, cool wind and lemonade, shade on a summer day? Did I ever say that I loved you? Did I ever say anything to you? Oh, I meant to. I meant to. Seeing you. Touching you. 
listening to your voice, feeling you warm, close to me. Loving you again has been so beautiful and so painful because I'm afraid. How fitting that you should find the evening of your life in the dawning of this day to end your journey in the glory of song beneath the blossoms you once settled on. So peacefully you went your way, your quiet journey through. So peacefully you went your way beneath the morning dew. She reminds me not of anyone or any dreams or any place or anything I ever knew. Not even you. When I awoke, I found your makeup on my cheek and the scent of your hair lingering sweetly in my heart, swirling gently there, there about your laughter, resting in your eyes, waiting there in the shade of your arms, living in the quiet crystal love you left adrift inside me, adrift on a sea of summer daisies, Strange that in the ruin of my life you've managed to find some earth worth tilling, some damp, dark ground still rich and moist with longing. There, among the ghosts who haunt me, <laughs> 